Hello and welcome to another Bushwhacker review. Today we are going to be taking a look at Ryan Blaney's Libman Menard's Next Gen Diecast for 2022. Finally get to look at some of the Next Gen Diecasts. It only took until August for these to come out for most people, but that's beside the point. Anyways, let's first take a look at the packaging, the infamous packaging. And yes, I absolutely hate this new packaging. Much like most people, my biggest problem with this packaging is you're not going to be able to stack it. And this is just, this little plastic piece is only in there for some reason for the, uh, this is for like the brown box, I guess so the uh, brown box doesn't collapse or something. That's at least nice, they gave you a little bit something else, but I'm, I don't think that's going to help you stack these things. But it's like I said, it's just cut out, so if you try to put a car here, another box here, it's just going to fall down and you know, maybe this will help a little bit, but I don't know why they were like, why would you not think of that? Like, it's so annoying to me. It's like, you know people stack these boxes high in their closets and stuff, and it's like, you're going to make it so you can't even stack them? And the box is boring at that. Like, you see, there's, like, not even renders or anything anymore. You just have a Lionel Racing logo, next-gen 2022 season, Lionel Racing, 124, no anything. Top, again, not even Team Penske or anything, just a generic Lionel box. Standard finish, NASCAR Cup Series. Absolutely nothing on this side. Same stuff on this side. Still got the silver sticker right there. You see they made 564 of these things. Action Racing Collectibles. Be sure to enter your car's DIN at LionelGarage.com. So there's like, this is, these are the same boxes for every single driver now. They don't even have like team boxes anymore. There's the bottom with some copyright and such. So I absolutely despise these boxes. They took out even any of the little bit of fun we still had and you can't stack them and they're just terrible. Everyone hates them. So maybe Lionel will be smart enough to get rid of them. From what I've heard, most people at Lionel, beyond a select few, also hate these boxes, so maybe that'll be enough for them to switch. Anyways, enough ranting about a box. Here is the car itself. And we finally have a look at our next-gen diecast. I will say, at least on the diecast itself, Lionel did a really good job of recreating the next-gen cars. I don't know why everyone's, like, crying about them so much. We get, we're get we getting the same, like, kind of boomer fans that were crying when they first cheapened up these diecasts that are like... They're expecting me to pay $70 for a damn winter circle, boy. It's like, I hate those people so much. It's like, this is not a winter circle diecast. Like, come on. <laughs> like, it looks perfectly fine on a shelf. And I also like the people that are complaining about the bottom of this car. Like, look at how cheap and plain it is. It's like, yeah, have you not paid attention? This is what the bottom of the next gen looks like. This is perfectly accurate to the bottom of the next gen. On the Elite version of the car, you can actually unscrew this black, you know, underbase thing, and it'll you can see some of the details on the inside of the car. You can't do that with the ARC, but I don't know. I said they did a really good job of recreating it. Like, it really does get the look of the car down. They got a little cues down. It's got the, you know the cameras up top. It does actually have a molded roof hatch. That's really cool. Does have the exhaust pieces? Is it actually like? Yeah, it is actually molded. Is that, though, is that where, that's not even where it isn't anymore, isn't it? Or did they, I forget. Is that where they moved it, or did they move it back? Because I know at one point it was, like, right there, and at one point it was right there. I don't know which one came first and which one came second. But have to see on the race versions where it actually is, because I'm sure they're not going to remold the piece. So whichever side was accurate, they're going to definitely just use a decal for her. I don't know. So I'll have to wait for one of the race versions to come out to check that out. Has the same window net. The one thing they did screw up is the spoiler. It has this giant spoiler, but that is not entirely their fault. Because they were initially going to run the package with the big spoiler again, but eventually decided not to. So I said you can't really blame Lionel on that one. So as, as far as I'm concerned, they did a good job of recreating the next-gen diecast. But anyways, let's get down to sponsors. On the hood, you have Libman, cleaning since 1896. Got Pennzoil and Ford Mustang, number 12 on the front. On the side, you have the big old Menards logo. Got Libman back there. Got Kid, Richmond, Knopf, Worth, and Wabash National on the side. Got Advanced Auto Parts and Dex Imaging on the C-Post. Does actually have, like, even on the clean versions, has that little, like, you know, where the window actually goes. Because, you know, the window usually goes farther than that, but then they cut out a part of it to make it look closer to the, McDo the uh, Mustang window. On the B-Post, you have Ford, PPG, Mazak, Dent Wizard, and Discount Tire. You see, there's the forward facing number. The thing that, you know, caused a bunch of, you know, pretty much the same boomers to just lose their shit as soon as they announced that. Which I do like the people that back when the All-Star race happened and they were like, we're, gonna, we're fixing by moving the number. 
And then they were just like, don't worry, why are you so mad? Like, it's just for the All-Star Race. And then, I guess moving back was just for the All-Star Race. But then, of course, like, a couple years later, here is, they're going to move the number permanently. My biggest problem with moving the number is that they forced all the teams to move the number. I wish they would have just been like, put it wherever you want. Put it forward, put it backward, put it in the center. Like, just use it however you want to use it. The fact they're just like, no, everyone is putting it forward, even if you don't want to, is kind of stupid to me. But... You should just have the new windshield banner, too, with the little vent in the front with Ford and Blaney. On the back, you have Menards. You got the Ford Michigan license plate still. Got number 12. Back end looks really nice. Has the molded, you know, tail lights. Has the diffuser out the back. Said, said as far as I'm concerned, beyond the spoiler, they did a really good job recreating the next gen. On the deck lid, you have Maytag, Kid, Libman, Jack Link's Beef Jerky, Atlas, Moen, Cardell, Sylvania, Duracell, and Target. So the Penske cars all move Snap-on onto the roofs of their cars because, you know, Snap-on used to be right, you know, there. <laughs> I guess they can't really fit it down there anymore. You see, the DIN number is... They paint them in, like, tan now, so you can barely even see it. Like, that's probably not even coming across on camera. It's like, this is number, like, 125 or 175. Like, whose bright idea was that? Why would you mess with that? <laughs> is it the same guy that made the box? Oh, got the same stuff down the other side. Take a look under the hood. It wants to open. So you have Powered by Ford and Menards under there. There's the engine detail if you want to see that. Which, again, I think Lionel did a pretty good job of molding it how it actually looks. More people are complaining about how little detail's in there, but that's how it looks. You got the big cover on the top. You got, you know, where those hood vents would be coming out. I said, looks like it's pretty detailed under there. It is a new engine. Like, they didn't just copy-paste anything. They actually did completely remold the engine block for the next-gen car. So that's pretty cool in my book. I said, as we've said before, but they uh, they did just decal the hood vents. Which, if they're going to do that, they should definitely make it look a little bit... They should almost be on top of the logos. Because like that, you see, like, look at on that side. It's completely covered by the Limit logo. That doesn't look too accurate, but... People complaining about that, too. Like, this, that's a good idea. Have you seen how bad Lionel is... Like, you can kind of see it even a little bit on this car, but you know how bad Lionel is with even the roof flaps? Like, with the little chips and the little such like that? Like, with all of that going on with Lionel, do you really think they would have been able to print decals over, like, a bunch of holes? It, it wouldn't have gone well. Like, I'm, I'm kind of glad that they were smart enough to even say that they probably would have been doing a good job on that, so they just decided to decal them. I don't know. That's just me. And get a good look at the interior. You want to see that? It does have the digital dash and all that. Nothing really stands out too crazy in the interior. It does have the chrome Penske rims. Well, I don't think I kind of screw up the rims for a lot of these because none of the cars except for 2311 actually use black rims. They all have like, they're like a kind of like dark silver, like dark gray color is the standard rim color for most cars. Penske does use chrome. I feel like pointing that out. Because I saw in one of the uh, Facebook groups, the people, like, somebody posted this Ryan Blaney car, and people were like, those chrome rims look awful. Penske doesn't even use chrome rims. It's like, what do you... Yes, Penske uses chrome rims. I will say Penske does seem to have some weird times in races where it's like the rims aren't chrome for, like, parts of the race, but then are chrome for other parts of the race. I'm not sure what happens there. If they just only buy, like, a f certain number of sets that are actually chrome, but... The Penske rims have been chrome all year, and they're supposed to be chrome, so Lionel did a good job recreating that. I think my favorite one of those comments was somebody was like, I don't think they're really chrome. They're just a little shinier than everyone else's. It's like, what? So they are chrome. So I feel like just pointing that out right now. If you think they're not chrome, you're wrong. But anyways, that is enough ranting in one review for once. So this is definitely, I do think Lionel did a good job of recreating the car itself. I hate the box with every ounce of my being. I said, hopefully that they see all the backlash of the box and eventually change it. But by this point, we probably wouldn't see it changed by the time, like, changed cars come out. It wouldn't be until, like, January next year or something. So, hopefully they're listening and they paid enough attention that everyone hates these boxes so much. <laughs> but, if you want this card as a brand new release, you can get it right now. A lot of these early next gens are going pretty fast because people have just been waiting so long to get a next gen car in their hands. That they're just, now they finally come out, these ones are kind of flying off the shelves, the first few that come out. And so this, this is like the first real one to actually come out. This one and uh, Kevin Harvick's gear wrench. I said the other ones that have come out so far have just been like the Hendrick test cars and stuff. And those really aren't, most people don't really care about test cars. So this is the first like real look at a next gen car you can really get. 
Remember, for all of your diecast needs, you can go to circlebdiecast.com. If you use the code BWAC, you can get $5 off shipping on any order over $30. So go check it out if you want anything. But I've been all there is to say, this has been our first look at a next-gen diecast, Ryan Blaney's Menards Libman Ford from 2022. Hope you enjoyed, and thanks for watching.